Welcome to the Focused Professional Podcast. This is episode 10, and I'm Joe Lenton. Welcome to the Focus Professional Podcast. Today, we're with Martina Varenfeld. Hello, Martina. Hello. And Martina, I'm sure you've heard of. She is well known for taking home plenty of trophies, filling up her uh, shelves with lots of pretty objects, glass objects and other objects that uh, celebrate her many successes. She's also a very well-known and celebrated trainer in photography, known particularly for her fine art portraiture. So, We're thrilled to have you on today, Martina. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for having me. I'm so happy to be here. Like I mentioned to you earlier, you know, don't want to turn down any possibility that we have to talk about our passion. Quite, yeah. We're all nerds at heart, really, photographers. Absolutely. (laughs) So you've just come back from Vegas and, of course, with a few more pretty things to put on the mantelpiece. So (laughs) tell us a little bit about that. What did you win in Vegas? Well, Vegas was a big surprise this year. It was pretty cool. I came there quite relaxed. So this is the first time that I actually had speaking engagements. And that's been a, a goal of mine, an inter- especially internal goal that I was like dreamt of being one of those speakers. Because when I came there many years ago, for the first time, I didn't know anybody. I didn't know the industry that well. And I was just utterly alone walking down the hallways, taking classes mm. from big names and getting to know the industry and also started my competition in, okay. in Vegas, yeah. uh, my the whole route of competing. So WPPI has a very, very special place in my heart. Mm-hmm. I've you know got lots of longtime friends f- coming from going over there. So this year, I was so focused on my speaking engagements, and I mm-hmm. was so thrilled. And also, when I entered the competition, because they redid the whole competition uh, for oh, this yes. year. Yeah, they've been going through some reorganization, mm-hmm. and when I entered it in October, I've had some personal issues. It was I was not in a good space, and I I was really not feeling encouraged. And I was like, oh yeah, well I cannot not enter, so mm. I got to throw something in there. And and I pulled a couple of you know things that I believed in, and I made it to the finals with two images. One was quite strong. The other one, uh, okay, not so much. <laughs> but the one that was strong, I still, I, because I've been c- competing with that image a couple of times before. Okay, yeah. In, throughout the year, both in Sweden and in London, and it got well received. Yes, mm-hmm. but I listen in, so it's not one of those images because I've had other images where judges rave about it, and this one has mm-hmm. been sort of like. Hit and miss, you know, people go, yeah, Yeah. it's good, but it doesn't really catch on to everybody. So Mm -hmm. I was not really confident in that image. And, but it was okay though. So that's what I'm saying was the biggest surprise because I was not that nervous or I should Mm. say excited. I was just so much more relaxed this time because Mm. my focus was on the speaking engagements and the the training that I was going to do there. So when they came to the award, I was like, ah, it's okay. You know, I'm I'm happy. I'm glad I'm in the finals. That was a big achievement because they only brought ten top 10 Mm. in each category, made it to the finals. So I was quite happy with that. And I told my friend before the award tonight, I think I might have a chance at third place. That might be possible, you know. Mm -hmm. And if I get a third place in Vegas, I am happy. Yeah, yeah, Um, absolutely. So that was what I said. And she goes, are you sure? Because she's been seeing me (laughs) compete before. I said, God's honest truth, you know. I don't even have butterflies. So, and I saw the other images in that category and it was just, they were really good. So when we get to the Mm. awards night, I achieved my double master's degree Mm. in Vegas. And before we haven't, 
really being called up on stage for that. But now they have made trophies for the double masters. Excellent. So yeah. we get called, yeah. Hopefully and a nice really, big one. Yeah. <laughs> it was a nice big one. Good. And uh, <laughs> I had the opportunity to to walk on stage with my dear friend and colleague, Sarah Edmonds. Mm-hmm. And we got up there together, hand in hand. It was just beautiful a uh, moment. And we got our trophies. And I told her, I says, yay, this is my only shot of being on stage this, <laughs> this <laughs> night. <laughs> because in Vegas, only the first place winners mm. go on stage. Yeah. You get a trophy for second and third, but you don't get on stage until you're in first place. And I only had a first place win in Vegas one time before. And right. that was 2019. So they yeah. don't come around easy. No. And so I'm, I'm I'm happy that I got this double master trophy. And I was yeah, like, yay! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm bringing home a trophy. That was like the biggest thing for me. And then the category came on. With, it was maternity. Mm. And the category came on. And I sat there. And the third place came up. And that was one of my favorites. And then second place came on. And that was the favorite I had for that category. I thought I was going to win the whole thing. So I, I was sitting there filming it because I was hoping for third place, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then when that came out, I was about to take my camera down yeah. and literally reach over to grab my drink because I was done in my head. Yeah. And then they said, <laughs> and the winner is Martina Hornfeld. And I go, what? <laughs> that was my first result. I go, what? <laughs> no. <laughs> so I said, I was shaking my head all the way up to the stage. I go, no, no, no. Somebody <laughs> counted this wrong. Uh, it was the weirdest feeling because, you know, Entering so many competitions for so many years, mm. you still have that butterfly. You still have that excitement. You still yeah. get, oh, yeah. but this year I was like, nah, nah, <laughs> it's not going to happen. <laughs> so, oh, the shock was, it was so much fun. The shock was so much fun to to experience that you'd be like, oh, <gasps> That's, that's even better, I think, when it's like that, rather than when you're sort of on the edge of your seat all the time wondering, have I got it? Have Thinking, I got it? this you know? is a good one. This this yeah. can actually make it, you know, yeah. and then you get disappointed. But no, this this was a blast. <laughs> Emotions, I felt, was a blast. I imagine. Really excited. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. I mean, is this, when you enter the competitions like this, is this something that you do because you, you enjoy that buzz of winning? Is it something you do to help your business? Is it something for yourself to kind of get a feeling for how you how you're measuring up what what makes you enter these kind of competitions what a good question because that ha- it has been a journey of reasons actually mm-hmm. uh, i started out for actually measurements because i wanted to do workshops i wanted to do training yeah and before i i, I started that i wanted to sort of measure because i wasn't involved in the big photography communities the national ones the international ones i was mm-hmm. just a little, you know, businesswoman, done it for many years, had happy clients down here in my city, and I was happy. But I was like, okay, so if I'm going to go out on a national scale, teaching people mm. about portraiture, h- how good am I? You know, mm-hmm. do I measure sure. up? Yeah. So yeah. that's when I entered the first time in the Swedish nationals, and I did so good, so good that mm-hmm. year, I was shocked myself. And then I dared to enter into WPPI the next <laughs> following year. Okay. And I had a few prints hanging in the gallery. So Excellent. that's how I got started. And it was definitely a buzz. It mm. was definitely an ego thing in the beginning to go, yay, I'm doing something great. Mm. And on a personal note, at the same time, we have had some really difficult times. Mm-hmm. And it's not hard to to draw the line between me excelling mm. in my craft as the, the 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 rest of my life was sort of in turmoil. Right. So because I was really happy at work and uh-huh. I was sort of feeling successful, and I I just like jumped. In. It was mm. like my therapy. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Literally. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's why I think it would just connected with me so hard in the beginning because my life was kind of chaotic at that mm. time. So I, I I felt happy and relaxed and, and successful in that area. So mm. that's why I, I continued. And then I realized that this could be a path to doing more international workshops. Because yeah. I was already teaching locally and nationally at that time. A couple of years I went by. 
And I did Norway and Finland and stuff like that. But I was like, I love to travel. Mm -hmm. I love to see new cultures and meet people. And I love to talk about, like I said in the beginning, mm -hmm. the passion yeah. about photography and the portraiture. And I, I do bore my clients to death sometimes <laughs> because I want to <laughs> tell them why I'm doing this and how I'm thinking. And they're like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> so for me to, to have students who are interested it's it's happiness for me. Mm. So I I decided that, or I contemplated that winning awards will get my name out there. Yeah, and so I can have an international audience. Mm -hmm. So so people will be, hey, you're good at what you do. Do you want to come here and talk? Mm. And so the last few years has been a career yep. thing. Still excited though. Oh yeah, I mean, sure. I'm still getting Absolutely. nervous, and yeah. I still get the buzz. So, so it's yeah. a win-win. Mm -hmm. But it has been a conscious choice to enter to build upon my sort of competition degree, mm -hmm. and and having that being the name pushed out. So now it's working. So mm. now I am, you know, gathering international students for online courses and and talking about maybe like just the other day. I had an editing course online and this girl in Romania missed the appointment, but we recorded oh. it. So she's going to get it. So I talked right. to her yeah. on the phone and I said, I'm so sorry you missed it. It was a misunderstanding. And then she was like, I'm from Romania. I was like, well, I never been to Romania. And then we start talking <laughs> and she goes, Oh my God, I have several friend photographers who actually follows you as well. Uh -huh. And maybe you want to come to Romania and do a workshop. What do you need? And I go, cool. Great. I would love yeah. to. And yeah. then boom, that w wheel is spinning. So mm. it's working. You know, that's and that's great. I love that part. Yeah, it's interesting how our careers can evolve like that, and sometimes yeah. in directions that we try to engineer, and then sometimes in directions we had no idea about what was going to happen. Yeah, yeah. It's it's and quite bizarre, isn't it? <laughs> it's bizarre, and that's one thing that really clicks with my personality. Mm -hmm. I I hate routine. I sympathize I, with you there. Absolutely. Oh, gosh, yeah. I I just want the variety. I want mm -hmm. the excitement, the challenges. Mm. And uh, not all the time. I don't mind sometimes just going to work and just do normal stuff as well. Yeah. But I, I think it keeps me interested and it keeps me passionate and it just keeps me happier. And yeah, I mean, the same thing all over. You seem to have a, a real passion both for your sort of portrait work that you do for clients, but also for for the teaching as well. So you're passionate about passing on your knowledge and your enthusiasm for for the subject as well is that have you always sort of thought that you'd like to to go into teaching have you always had an urge to kind of share what you learn are you somebody who naturally when you get interested in something you want to tell people about it is that how you got into teaching or i just like to tell people what to do <laughs> <laughs> I see. So it's either you pose like that, stand like that, or no, stick your camera here, put the lights there. Yep. Okay. Pure bossiness. Fair enough. <laughs> Pure bossiness. Um, I, I, I don't, I don't know. I never thought of myself. I wasn't, I wasn't a good student, for example. I was a bit obstinate. I was a bit, you know, rules are made to be broken kind of a student. So, um, <laughs> What happens if someone does that in one of your workshops then? Can you cope with that? I encourage it. <laughs> Excellent. I encourage it. Yes. <laughs> I tell them all the time. Yeah. I think my father was sort of a natural, I wouldn't say leader, but mm -hmm. he was like always, if he got involved in something, then he was in, invited into the board. And then suddenly he was the chairman, you know, because mm -hmm. he was engaging yeah. as a person. Mm -hmm. And I think... That is one of the things I, I inherit from it. I'm, I'm engaging as a person. I am engaging with my clients and I am engaging with trainers. And, mm. and like I said, I'm passionate at what I do. And I enjoy to see that little light bulb goes off. And I've taken mm. a lot of courses and I, sometimes I've sat in with um, uh, huge star photographers and very talented and very good craftsmen. But then I also been overwhelmed because it's so technical and they've mm -hmm. been so perfect. Okay. Uh, so yeah. to speak, you know, yeah. so you sort of get intimidated and, mm -hmm. and you feel like insecure and you lose a little bit of self confidence sometimes when you go to mm. classes. So what I think that I really enjoy doing is just bringing some, losing some of their pretentiousness mm -hmm. and just giving them my 
horror stories about me screwing up and I'm just mm. showing that everything we can fail at this and mm -hmm. I'm just I'm not even I'm not even good at technical terms mm -hmm. you know so I'll be literally like you know that little button that sort of turns and twists and you know <laughs> yeah. that comes out that's yeah. the one you're going to use and they look at me and go oh thank god <laughs> another one like me yeah. you know <laughs> brilliant <laughs> and yeah. uh, uh, sometimes I, I have a I have a colleague of mine here in Sweden and she lives just outside the city and we are for this is the third third year in a row we are doing a combined workshop for right. a couple of days. Okay. And she uh, she does a lot of fairy fairy tale kind of portraits out in the forest and I do my fine art. We usually at a castle or we rent like a mansion nice. and I do my fine art yeah. portraits inside and then mm -hmm. the group goes outside with her in the woods in the forest. So it's a perfect combination. Mm. But she's so technical. She's so good at all the words and the right terms. <laughs> so when I'm standing there having my lecture and I look at her and I go, "Maria," the she goes, the name is blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and I go, thank you, Maria. <laughs> and and I kind of a walking I, textbook kind of, for you. <laughs> <laughs> she is, and I'm doing my Photoshop, and I'm going. Uh, I keep forgetting. I just did it at night. I keep forgetting. Oh yeah, that's right. This is. See, I already forgot it. I don't even remember what that was. The little band aid. Oh yeah, the, the healing brush. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> that's one I always forget. <laughs> so I started going. <laughs> And I have to sort of ho hover over it with my first one goes, yeah. healing brush tool, yeah. spot healing brush tool. tool. <laughs> and I think that, and what I enjoy about teaching is when I can see people looking at me going, oh my God, that's mm -hmm. so funny. You're like me. And I've had had a couple of those throughout the years when I realized that those big photographer names aren't perfect. Mm. And that gave me the confidence and the courage to go out there yeah. and tell people I'm not perfect. Yeah. But I, I can do this really well. Absolutely. And I think it's um it's it's giving people the, the the courage to try things in workshops as well. I mean when I started doing some group workshops my, myself, I had people coming who were used to going to very big workshops, lots and lots mm -hmm. of people, where the person would essentially set something up and then everybody else would join a queue, go through, take a photo and sit down. And that was basically it. So yeah. I said to them, right, OK, I'm going to show you this. So I, was, I would demonstrate the lighting. And then I was really mean. I, t I changed all the settings and all the lights. I moved the lights around the room. <laughs> and I said, right, now it's your turn. <laughs> <laughs> and they, what know, a great way to learn though. it's like oh i was like you have been paying attention haven't you <laughs> yeah oh my goodness that's kind of evil but good <laughs> and that way i knew when they left that they could actually do it not yeah. just have a picture of it on their camera going oh yeah i took a picture with so-and-so's lighting set up and i've People are not used to working like that. They're not used to instructors necessarily really challenging them. I mean, you get some great instructors at some international conventions, but all too often on sort of the you know, smaller local levels, it, it's just someone who's got something to vaguely work and then they just show everyone else and they repeat it and that's it. Yeah. Yeah. So um, that's a good way to do it. I might mm. steal that method a little bit, Joe. <laughs> I have an upcoming workshop in, in both Finland mm -hmm. and Oslo. Mm -hmm. And I, for example, F Norway, I've been going to once or twice a year for many years now. Mm -hmm. I love to go to Norway. I have a lot of friends in Norway that are photographers and just enjoy coming over there. But mm. it also puts the pressure on me to come up with something new. Yeah. Because I yeah. do not want to go over there once or twice a year and repeat myself. So no. there's like, oh, you want to come over here and do a little workshop like we did last year? Go, sure. Yeah. Oh, gosh, what am I going to talk about? What am I going to talk about? How am I going to do this differently? <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so yeah, that right. could be get them to do element. Get them to do mm -hmm. some of the work like that. Yeah, that'll... Yeah. That uh, uh, that will appeal to your slightly naughty side, I think. There, you'll enjoy yes, you'll enjoy that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for giving me that tip. Even if it's just as you walk away, you turn the power down or something, and sure, don't, don't tell sure. them you've done it. They take a photo and go, "Oh, that doesn't look right." That kind of problem solving, I think, is mm -hmm. is how people learn much more effectively than just mm -hmm. okay. If I'm going to do this picture, I need to be at this setting on my camera. This light goes yeah. to that setting. Yeah. I need that size and umbrella with that kind of yeah. you know. It, it's so formulaic then, and you think yeah. if you can understand light, you can understand the principles. You, yeah, you can take great photos with all sorts of things. Yeah, you know, it doesn't have to be the latest and the greatest stuff. 
So it's which is which is excellent for me to think about. I really, really appreciate you mention this right now because I do tend to feel like I want to add something to it because I'm most like you said in the beginning, mm. I'm mostly known for my fine art portraiture. Yeah. And they want me to talk about artistic portraits. And how many ways can I go through this? Mm. You know, mm. I want to add some mm. more elements, and mm. and which is good because I keep challenge challenging myself mm -hmm. to do something different. But Absolutely. it's also when it comes to workshops, not just talk about colors and props and hand mm. holdings and hand posing, which is my you know expertise, mm. but also bringing in another level of understanding, like you said, about the light and. So good, yeah. very good. I Thank think you. if people can work stuff out, I think that it stays with them for longer. You know, it involves mm -hmm. a bit more of the brain than just the kind of watch and repeat. So it's it can it can feel a bit cruel to begin with if they ha especially if they've come in a bit dopey and haven't paid enough attention. Yeah. <laughs> so okay, fun. now it's your go. Yep. Uh, yep. <laughs> <laughs> what do I do here? But I, I mean, f for me, I've got a small studio, so I've had. I've come up with ways of creating the lighting that I want without having the space and the kind of modifiers all the time that I that I want mm -hmm. to be able to use. So I've got sort of um, big white sheets of foam core board that I that I use in in place of another light source because I haven't got room to put a light there. So I'll use mm -hmm. it bounce some light from another one so sometimes mm. one light is doing like three jobs <laughs> you get quite creative that way and <laughs> you do you do and i i didn't have a large studio from the beginning so mm. i had very low ceilings and i did not i was not able to you know photograph large groups so i also mm. turned to you know learn photoshop quite early just mm. so i can you know Stitch together large groups, you know. Did whatever, you get them all you know? sit, uh, sitting down to begin with as well? I suppose yeah. with the low ceiling, like, yeah. no one standing not up. Re not really that low, but yeah, uh, definitely challenged with the lighting. But we got to start somewhere, you know. Absolutely, yeah. And make it work. So I mean, you've 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 taught in quite a few countries now. What's your sort of feeling for the the, the sort of standard of photography and for how people how much people want to learn? Well, I think that the learning, the interest of learning is definitely there wherever mm -hmm. you go in the world because people show up to those places because they want to learn. Yeah. And I think what's interesting is because online right now, we have so many possibilities. We mm. There is anything. And I go online when I have a problem or a Photoshop thing that I was like, how do I do that? Mm -hmm. And then I go to YouTube, I find tutorials. And that's one way of learning. And it's out there for anybody mm -hmm. but i think as a community or when you really interested when you meet with people when you're in a setting where mm -hmm. you have live body so to speak <laughs> mm -hmm. and you can you bounce off each other energy and ideas and problems comes up just like we just mentioned and that just gives it another level of learning and i think that that's still thriving and it feels like people are still interested in meeting that way Great. Uh, so that's one part of it. And as far as the standard of portrait, I think it's I think it's good. I think mm -hmm. the knowledge once again is out there, and people are learning, and they are interested in it. Then, if you look back to way, way, way before, it's always going to be those who who levels up, mm -hmm. and those who are happy to. I mean, I have colleagues in town that hasn't really upped their game in, mm. I would say, fifteen years. Yeah. There's no changes. Mm -hmm. They're still making a decent living. Mm -hmm. So, but for them, it's not the passion to to grow as an artist. Yeah, it's a bit and like they just. Yeah, I mean, you was you know you were saying earlier, you get bored with just doing the same thing, just doing mm -hmm. the routine and so on, and mm -hmm. you like to be that developing yourself. I suppose for for some people, it's a bit like for me as a commercial photographer. You get some people who love just doing the same thing over and over and over because they can shoot quite quickly and they can make quite a lot of money quite quickly that sort of thing i just find so boring you know? <laughs> yeah, but that's the personality <laughs> exactly why, yeah you know? so so for, and, for them they don't necessarily always want to keep pushing themselves and for others like me i never feel like i've learned enough no so but it's, and, yeah, it's and, different and that's wonderful because and i try to say that and explain that sometimes when we are talking about photography that Whatever is in you mm. as a person and your personality is what's going to shape your career. Yeah. It's, it's, if you find that 
connection with who you are and how you work, mm. you will be happy. Yeah. Because it's not for everybody to to, to find the perfection or go for perfection or, or chase it mm. or, or develop all the time. Some people comes up to this, they learn the basic skills, they get paid for their, and then they're happy. And, yeah. and they're not going to win awards. They're not going to be, you know, coming that way. But they do make a decent living, actually enjoying shooting, you know, with a camera, making portraits, people buying it, done. Yeah. And then we have the other group that are not as sane. (laughs) Can't think who you're talking about. (laughs) That sort of like, I want more, more. What can I learn this week? Yeah, Um, absolutely. It's got to be something we can talk about to somebody. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe we need therapy. Yeah. <laughs> maybe we need therapy. So, yeah, I think I think the levels are just as, as it always has been throughout. It's like some people mm. are going to push it and they're going to reach those levels. And we see that and we think it's amazing. Mm. If you go to competitions like in London for SWPP or in Vegas for WPPI, and you can see the amount of creativity and the passion that goes into those competition prints. And mm. I am such a fan of print competition because the print and the final end is that evidence of the craftsmanship. Mm. Because today when you have the, um, all the online possibilities some people are amazing at their instagram work and and they put out and they can be like superstars on instagram but if they're going to print that file it might not look Mm. as amazing Mm -hmm. so for me the completion of the craftsmanship is to actually to make be able to make a beautiful print Mm. that's why i think print competitions and the few that are still around are so important yeah, they have the a Im, they have an important role in the industry in helping people to maintain standards and mm. you know giving people new ideas and things to uh, aspire to and mm. I think it's it's important that we do maintain those those standards in there. I think there's a lot of tools that we have in photography now and they just seem to grow by the day what we can use to create things and there, there, there's that little bit of a risk that we potentially get lazy and think, oh, I'll just fix it afterwards or, oh, I'll just. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, I do that. You know. I become very good at Photoshop because I'm, I'm, I'm lazy sometimes. Yeah, the, there is the, you have to kind of decide where you want to put the work in. <laughs> Am yep. I going to do yep. it in the studio with the light, moving it two inches to the left, two inches to the right? Or am I going to do it in Photoshop with brushes and things like that? So, mm. you know, it's it's a choice for your workflow, yeah. how, how yeah. you want to be. But I, I think sometimes people do rely a bit too much on hoping that they can fix it afterwards. Oh, I, oh, oh <laughs> of course. And yeah. that is definitely one thing that we, we really like talking about is get mm. it right in camera and and the things that you can miss sometimes could be a strand of hair or whatever that's yeah. okay but yeah. the basics of lights lightning lightning not lightning woo <laughs> Light, the lighting skills and all of that is really needs to be there mm. i think like you said you know taking care of the standards and and trying to you know have that as a community professional photographers coming up to that standard just for everybody's mm. sake yeah, ab- absolutely. Yeah, and we're we're all offering something, something more than a customer would be able to just do themselves. I think, mm-hmm. you know, as a as a professional, that's kind of kind of our role is to be able to mm-hmm. give them something that they can't do themselves, really. Yeah, yeah, it's true. So, with your fine art sort of portraiture work, you said uh, you've said before that you were kind of inspired by paintings sort of more classical portraiture what is it about that that appeals to you can you sort of describe why that interests you sure well actually i wanted i wanted to paint when i was younger Mm -hmm. for me i i my mom was a very good like sketch artist and she can draw very beautiful pictures Mm -hmm. and i was inspired by her and i tried to do it and i can't I have like no talent in my hand, <laughs> literally. <laughs> I pretty much suck at it. <laughs> and I tried. I'm really good at, you know, drawing eyes and horses' heads. That's it. That's where it stopped. Okay. But no, so for me, uh, that wasn't a basic interest. And then I'm just thinking that I'm, I'm, I always enjoyed beauty. Mm-hmm. And it can be literally anything. It can be beauty of a small, tiny flower in the forest. It can mm. be beauty of a late night sky. I, that's something that it's, 
pleasing and I, I think I take it to heart. Mm -hmm. It can be a beautiful person, mm -hmm. personality wise. It can mm -hmm. be a, a, a outs, you know, like a face that's beautiful or hair that's beautiful. I tend to stop and tell, but oh my God, your hair is amazing. I just <laughs> tend to pay attention to mm -hmm. the beauty that is around and looking at old masters paintings. I am not fond of those who are the little bit more grotesque. Mm. And there are yeah. maybe evoking emotions that people go, oh, this is so strong and powerful. And I go, Ugh. <laughs> and then I go, I look at this when, when you're at these huge museums and you have the sculptures. Nike, Nike, is that in the Louvre? The, the big bust with the, I think it's Nike. Okay. That that statue is called, but they have made this fabric mm -hmm. in in marmor in 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 what do you call it marble um, marble. Thank you. And you make this fabric looks like it's flowing, and mm. you stand there going, "It's so beautiful." How do they do that? Mm. Or you get the big paintings, and you can see the brushstrokes and the and the. So uh, yeah, I think mm. it's an an awe for the talent mm -hmm. of people creating that from what they had possible for them and also it's just so pleasing and it's just mm. something that i can just rest in mm. so yeah i think mm. that's where the inspiration comes from so you like um I images that you that you feel that you feel comfortable sitting with then so something dark like a caravaggio or something like that where you're yeah, not no. not not so much your thing no, I don't. There's a picture I see in my mind when an old man is like literally biting some other heads off. I don't know. That's just one thing that came up. And I was like, no, <laughs> I, no. And that's that's a problem for me sometimes when it comes to competition. Yeah, I can imagine. And yeah, because yeah, yeah. I talked to a lot of people that some some dear colleagues of mine that are amazing at storytelling, like take Hannah Nerrett. Yeah, that is amazing at storytelling. And and she just and Kelly, Kelly Brown. Mm. They have that, they can tap into emotions that mm -hmm. people, when they see the image, they go, oh, man. I remember Kelly did an image a few years back that I was like, why didn't I come up with that? When she had <laughs> her, you know, she has boxers and she had one of their dog and laying on, there were two dog pillows. And one of her dogs is laying on one pillow, mm -hmm. looking over to the other pillow where there was an urn, mm -hmm. an urn. So there was no dog there. It was an urn. And okay. I go, it is such a simple idea, mm -hmm. beautifully executed. And I go, why can't I find a, <laughs> ah, you know, the, the darkness? And, the, and so, um, yeah, uh, I, I feel like I can make pretty pictures, yeah. you know, beautiful flowers. Yeah. Oh, well, we, 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 yeah. need, we need some of that, I think. Yeah, I mean, I think my, my default tends to be towards the darker side, I think. So, you know, so we need all. everything. We need everything. We need like a bit that. of both. And, uh, yeah. yeah, again, it's it's coming through your personality. It's your the photography you or whatever art form is an extension of yourself. It's expressing yourself, your own view of something. So that should be different to somebody else's. It shouldn't yeah, be identical. Yeah, that's true. Identical. It's true. I'm not saying I'm I'm not happy where I'm at. I'm just mm. saying that there is there is definitely room for improvement. I just need to dip into my darkness. <laughs> 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 okay, fair enough. Yeah. So when you're shooting, you know. Members of the public, I suppose, the darker side doesn't really tend to come into it so much. Then they tend to want to look a bit more pretty, anyway. But yeah, so when you <laughs> when you're shooting sort of members of the public for like a, a fine art portrait, uh huh, you very much talk about on your website about making it an experience for them. And I think mm. that that's something, especially when portrait photographers are starting out, that they can kind of forget that it's not just about the picture. You know, it's about more than that. So, what sort of what sort of things do you suggest that portrait photographers can do and what sort of things do you like to do to make it more of an experience rather than just uh, all about getting a photo that is definitely one thing that i care a lot about mm -hmm. and i think it comes down to connection mm -hmm. and to listen and to hear what your client want need mm -hmm. type of person they are mm -hmm. and and just connect with that without losing yourself as an artist because mm. it's not a it's not a matter of just doing whatever the client wants because there is this is a collaboration mm. and the best of collaboration is like when we meet they say what they want and what they're coming from and and i've had 
clients talking about their journey, if they've been through something awful or some trauma, and then they come out, they, they want to celebrate this mm. with images, then boom, we have that connection. And, and I need to tap into what can make them really enjoy this experience. Yeah. And then you have some people that is like a tough cookie and she's <laughs> like, yeah, I just got divorced. I'm feeling hot. You know, I'm in the best shape <laughs> I am and I'm just going to rock this. I'm going to make some sexy pictures. Then you in that, and then I, I connect with that mode. Uh huh. So, uh, that mood and I'll just go with that and we have fun and we upbeat. We play some rock and roll music in the studio. And then other times you need to be soothing. Yeah. And so I think I am pretty adaptable. Mm. in my personality to whoever is in the room and make sure I connect with them on whatever level they're at. And then I'll create something that we both have agreed on. This is what they want to aim for. Mm. So the professionalism is there, but Mm -hmm. also the personal connection. And just yesterday, I think it was what day is it today? (laughs) Yesterday, I had a, a very beautiful experience. We both were crying. Mm -hmm. Uh, literally both at the reveal and in the beginning of the session because i did a really tight it was a personal branding business uh, headshots right where she needed multiple images and when i do this i have a consultation first and then they come in i have a hair and makeup artist Mm -hmm. and we you know make them feel beautiful and we make sure they're happy and then we have several different clothing changes and then i do boom straight raw out of the camera reveal Mm -hmm. um, session and ordering Mm -hmm. session Mm -hmm. And when she had decided on her final images, and I've already done the consultation where I looked at her website and we planned this Mm. to suit her business needs. Yeah. And when she had decided on that final image, and I said, this is so beautiful. This is, and she was like, this is going to be perfect for this and this page when I talk Mm. about this. And I can feel tear and I go, you know what? Mm. This is my why. Yeah. This is what, because... This is not going to make me famous. I'm not going to win awards on these images, but I see somebody sitting there mm. being so happy. And she was quite insecure because she's like gained a lot of weight and she wasn't really in a place. So she was like, don't worry about it. I'll make sure you look the best, fabulous you, whatever. And yeah. she sat there and she goes, you made me feel so comfortable. You made me feel really beautiful today. And these are going to be magic for my website. I'm mm. so happy I made, I took this decision. Tears in my eyes, yeah. tears in her eyes, and I go, "This is it. This is what why I do this." So that's no spe- awards, yeah, no fame. You know, yeah, it's, but- it's it's just something totally different to that, isn't it? It's a special connection that you get in that way, and knowing that you've made a, a difference for for somebody yeah. through doing that. Yeah. And I think that sometimes. Okay, if you're the sort of person who is entirely about money and everything you do is all about earning money, then you might approach it slightly differently. But I think that there's there's really a place for ditching the formulae and really thinking about serving the client, especially when you're working in a very personal way like this with portraits. So instead of just saying, oh, yeah, I make it an experience by giving them a glass of wine and offering them a piece of cake afterwards, you think, well, well I'll do that you too. Know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but no, but, but that, on certain, you know, in, yeah. on certain portraits, we do have a glass of wine and some snacks. But yeah, you know, but that's it's more to it. It's more yeah, to it. That is that is a thing to offer, but that yeah. that is not the experience. It's no, it's it, true. You know, it's the connection with the person around it, and it's you serving their needs as as a person when they're coming in needing one particular type of photo, or they're in a different place and they need a, a photo to help them come out of that place all that sort of thing is far more effective and will get them coming back much more so than yeah. a piece of cake and a glass of wine will yeah absolutely <laughs> and make sure that we have and i have a stylist that mm. also are in tuned mm. with 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 that can adapt a little bit to the situation because if if she wasn't as smart you know and and Mm. flexible because she can meet all types of people and i can hear her because it's not always i'm standing right next to her as she's doing hair makeup and i can hear her how can she connect and how Mm. she can change the topics and talk to them she's also part of the business and the part of the experience yeah and many many times my clients uh, call me or email me or do an instagram post about the situation (laughs) where they mention me and my stylist you and your stylist Elin made me feel so special mm. and it was such so much fun to work with the both of you now yeah. isn't that beautiful absolutely that yeah 
we are a team at that time. I mean, she does only work for me when I have, I bring her in on commission, you know, when I mm-hmm. have a job. Mm-hmm. So, but we're still such a team and people are really enjoying the work, mm. um, the experience with us both. Yeah. Laughing, crying, talking about deep stuff, opening up. Yeah. You know, if it's, you know, my, my stylist, her daughter has autism mm-hmm. and, and she, she has no problem. She, oh, yeah, I know I have a problem. My daughter has, and you know, and then suddenly mm. you go deeper mm. than just doing hair and makeup. And that's yeah. a part of the experience, you know, for some people. Yeah, a- absolutely. It's being able to do the right thing for the right person, really, rather than yeah. just forcing everybody through the same way of doing it. I think what I, I sometimes find disappointing is that people want to find a quick way, a and so that of like what people you read the word hack around a lot these days. Yeah. Have you got the latest photography hack for making your business generate X thousand pounds a month? And you think. Stop looking for shortcuts and start connect- yeah. connecting, you know, start yeah. finding what you're passionate about and, and connect, yeah. you know, connect with your clients in that sort of way. Don't just copy someone else's template all the time. It might work a bit, but. Mm. <laughs> I know. And, and I think we're all fighting within ourselves about this whole social media must and you have to market yourself. You have to do this. I've, I've been going through a frustrating period that I feel like my engagements, and I know that it's, it's just like that for so many photographers right now, mm. that the engagement has really gone down so low. And it's sort of, I'm not saying I'm not going to be on social media. Yes, I am. I am reaching clients and, and students and it's out there. It's a part of my marketing. But I decided a couple of months ago, a few months ago, that, oh my God, I'm just going to push myself into networking, being out there, talking about my work, mm-hmm. b- bringing me to the table, not just through a phone, yeah, but also be out there. So I know if I'm out at a business situation where I have at a company and I meet somebody and I can sense or whatever, they say, what else do you do? Oh, I'd be like, oh, I do this and I mm-hmm. do that. So I'm like a working commercial mm-hmm. for myself. And it has actually generated a bit more right now than the social media has for me. Because uh, it's, you know, looking at like your Instagram, you've got sort mm-hmm. of 15,000 followers on there, roughly mm-hmm. like that. And mm-hmm. people can sometimes assume, oh, you've got great numbers like that. Well, you must be getting loads of inquiries through there. Does it does it generate a lot of business for you? It is. Like I said, I think it goes in waves. Yeah. A year ago, I was last spring, I was fully booked. I had about two, sometimes three fine art portraits a week. Mm hmm. Almost burnt out. I mean, it was just so crazy. It was because I had a campaign going and I was posting it on social media and it blew up. Right. I did not put, I did not do a lot of advertisement. I did not, but it was just giving me fully booked. Uh Now the whole economy changed it. I mean, we all know that 2023 was so weird. Yeah. And this fall, that kind of line of income, just like, Mm. and I go, hello. (laughs) <laughs> Hello. Where did everybody? Yeah. Where did everybody go? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know. So, and I try to post, and I try to do campaigns, and it didn't bite. Mm. So I was like, "What am I? What am I doing wrong?" And I knew my product was solid and good, and I know mm. I'm not, I'm not a budget, you know, deal. But I'm, I'm not. It's not like crazy. It's not like buying a car or anything. No. So, no. So I just had to switch my focus and go into what else can I offer and start, you know, pushing my, my headshots and my business and, and just being flexible like that. And like I said, choosing where online I, I started pushing it. I st- I'm still keeping up with the finer portrait. And I think it's just like I said, it's going to go in waves. Mm-hmm. And that particular client group right now is struggling. Yeah. They are struggling with their finances, but there is still other groups out there that is available uh, can, that has you know mm. can afford to to invest in me and so now i'm pushing towards that goal and and so i i think a part of you know staying in business is being flexible absolutely i think you know, people people can look at you and they and they can see that you've been very focused to get where you are with the sort of level of your work you've but you're not focused to the point that you're not flexible you've you've got no. both in there you've got that focus that enables you to achieve excellence but you've got the flexibility that enables your business to survive the peaks and the troughs to go mm-hmm. with mm-hmm. to go with the weather of the business if you like of the economy yeah. and you know 
you need a little bit of both, don't you? That kind of resilience and persistence, but at the same time thinking, okay, there's no point banging my head against a brick wall here. We need to just shift direction. Right. And and like I've been in business for 27 years. Yeah. I'm an oldie <laughs> in this business. And I, I, I've been through a lot of things in business and I also never had only one niche. Because mm-hmm. going back to that on La Routine's, thing. So I've always had a corporate side of portraits, and then I had the private side of portraits, Mm -hmm. and they have been working beautifully combined. And right now, the way life is in the world economics, that the business side right now, it's more profitable for me Mm -hmm. to, you know, jump in. I still have a few portrait clients coming in doing finer portraits. It's not as much. Mm -hmm. And I am not going to lower my prices to suit the economy for that type of images I'm doing because mm. I know that they are worthy of the price tag that's mm. on it. So I'm just waiting for the clients to find me or pushing that out, you know, in social media. Uh, that's not m- where my heaviest attention is right now. Mm. It's still there, but I'm spending my time and money to push for the headshots and the and the personal branding part of my business, which I enjoy so much. Like I said, the client I had yesterday, it was such a beautiful, you know, shoot. Yeah, I, I think there's you know, there's another I- important lesson there for people who are thinking of moving more towards a higher end business rather than a budget one is high end businesses. If you think of sports cars and things like that, mm-hmm. if there's a little dip in the economy, they don't suddenly rush to do their their cars at half price or something. No, you know? no, nope. so, nope. But so many photographers, it's like, oh, I'm losing, I'm losing the number of customers Customers I've got at the moment, I better do a deal. And yeah. that can actually end up lowering the perceived value of what you're doing rather than pivoting and offering a slightly different product instead, something which can be done cheaper because it's a different product, because it doesn't mm-hmm. entail all the things that the other mm-hmm. one does. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, rather than going, oh, oh, panic quick, let's have a no. 30% off sale or something. We all feel the panic, though. Yeah, I have oh, yeah. to say that. Absolutely. I'm not saying that I'm above feeling the panic. Oh no. my God! It's, there's so many emotions going on, and you feel worthless and useless, and you have no confidence. You be like, "What's wrong with me?" You know, and then yeah. you go, "Wait a minute!" Oh, yeah. You know, and yeah. then you just like snap out of it. And what can I do? Mm. And uh, just like you said, offering something different. So I've been talking about this for quite some time right now, but I'm I like comparing it to the designer brand. Let's take Ralph Lauren. Mm-hmm which is a big designer brand and cost a lot. But, you know, they have their Lauren by Ralph Lauren, mm-hmm. which is mid-range, still a little bit of an investment. Yeah. But I mean, I have a purse yeah. from Lauren yeah. by Ralph Lauren. You mm-hmm. know, I can afford it if I want to invest mm-hmm. a little bit in a nice purse. So that's what I thought, you know. And mm. so that's what I've done Keeping my prices for my fine art portraits, that experience. Mm. But if you want to do portraits, you can do a classic portrait, which I always offered, but now I'm pushing it a little bit more. Mm. So you do a classical portrait. And if you're interested in the fine art look, we can still talk about the clothing you wear, Mm. how I light it, what kind of background I have. And then if you want me to do the fine art editing, you just, I just upsell that a little bit when it comes to the boxes yeah and it's 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 again it's small variations on a skill Mm -hmm. set where you're already very strong sometimes Mm -hmm. people think oh my portrait studio is not doing so great what shall i do oh oh uh, products and you think but that that's a totally different thing (laughs) you know i'll jump from products as oh oh, that's not doing so well oh what shall i do oh weddings you know it's (laughs) oh yeah you know people jump a long way. Sometimes mm-hmm. you only need to just move a small distance and just yeah. slightly change. Tweak it. Yeah. Tweak it a little bit and see and, and find new ways of how you market. Mm. Um, like I said, I've been the networking thing. I mean, I always love to talk about my photography, but I have to say that I've been kind of comfortable staying home at night, not going out there whenever I had an invitation going, eh, now <laughs> yeah. I'm a little bit more on my toes. And I go, sure, I'll be there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I come, I show up and I'm I'm having my business hat on and I go, hey, what do you do? Well, mm. you know, and then I boom. And so that was for me a shift of mindset and how I market. Mm. Yes, I'm still on Instagram. Yes, I'm on LinkedIn. And I'm on Facebook, but the networking thing has now, for me, grown much more than it had a year, a year and a half ago. Yeah. 
It's it's finding the right channels and these things do change. Trends change. People mm-hmm. might be with one form of social media for a few years and then the trend changes and they go somewhere else. And it's it's understanding where your your client base are as well, isn't it? Because you're likely to be drawing from people who are within a reasonably easy reach of your studio yeah, yeah, in the main. Yeah. You might have some people who'll travel a long way, but you're not going to expect the majority of your clients to be coming a big distance. No. Uh, so whereas if you're doing something like I do with products, a lot of the time I don't even see the client face to face at all. Right. I get right. products sent in the post, you know. Oh. There you go. Yeah. Quite often. So I don't advertise or network so much locally because with the small businesses, I'm not really the right solution for them. Right. You know, so I'm looking at advertising more broadly and further around the UK and also for for people from outside the UK because that's my market. And I think Mm. as well, people, when you're thinking about what channels you're going to use, when you do social media, you cannot do all of them. It's just no. too much. No. Yeah. You, know, you can't go to all of the networking meetings that are around and so on and so forth. It's choosing ones where you connect with it. It's choosing mm-hmm. ones where you can express your your business, your personality mm-hmm. to others, I think. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And and for me, the like last spring when I was so booked with my final portraits, I did actually have people coming long way, but it's not Sweden long way. It's like five hours drive. Yeah, yeah. That's a long way for us. But but that has also gone down a little mm. bit right now. So me shifting a little bit on how I do things, one of the things that I'm a, I just before I went to Vegas lifted it in social media, but I haven't pushed it through. I need to be more consistent. In, and when I come up with some new idea, sometimes I go, oh, this is a great new idea. Then I post about it once mm. and I go, and I don't get the engagement I think I deserve. <laughs> <laughs> and then I go, oh, it didn't work. And just the other day, I was, I was listening to some marketing tips and I go, you need to be consistent. I go, hmm, yeah, not yeah. so good at that. No, that need, yeah. that's, that's from thing I need to. So I'm going to mm. push out that I can actually go to my clients. But I'm going to make that super exclusive and they're going to have yeah. to buy a package that is quite an investment. But there is still people who would might jump onto that. Yeah. yeah. And I'm willing to give it a try because if I get that amount of investment, I don't mind getting in my car mm-hmm. and take a day or so on driving, you know, back mm-hmm. and forth, whatever. Go up one day, shoot one day and then stay over and go back. That, that's fine. Mm-hmm. That'd be a part of the mm-hmm. investment. And and just to meet those possible clients that are mm. that has the the money these days, mm. and that also, you know, are interested and and values what I do. Yeah, e- exactly. I mean, I had somebody see that I'd done a photo shoot for like a luxury self catering windmill a holiday home mm-hmm, mm-hmm, and they they, mm-hmm. they were doing up a windmill themselves in a different part yeah. of the country and they and it was like that we you know we, we drove over there we stayed we we did a shoot over the over a couple of days and and then and then came back you know so it's uh, it's sometimes clients want to do that they want to, they want to travel they want what you got uh, yeah yeah oh yeah i, <laughs> yeah. I usually i used to sell them the experience that they can come to my house. And we have a like a Michelin star restaurant in our town. And I was like, oh, have you heard about this restaurant, this hotel? And they go, no. And I go, yeah, you can make it a weekend. You can stay over. And some people just yeah. actually get into that. Now, you're going to have to follow me because I forgot to to take my plug in. My- <laughs> oh, you're running out of batteries. <laughs> but I'm running out of batteries. <laughs> so join me for a tour in the house. Uh, like once again, how we are not perfect. Yay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, we, we when you were talking about with uh, with uh, Instagram or other social media, when you post yeah. an image on there and you don't get that kind of response, you you have that enthusiasm. You think I've got a great idea or I've got yeah, a great yeah, image, yeah, and yeah, you, you put yeah. it out there, and you you're going through the feed to see if you've got any any likes or whatever. And ne- mm-hmm. next to it, somebody's posted an an image of their cat. And there's yes. like 100 likes on there and people go, oh, this is amazing. This is fantastic. And you've got like three and you go, oh, <laughs> why did why did I bother? You know? But yes, it is that that consistency. And I think there's also the there is also the fact that people do get kind of used to seeing the sort of things that, that we produce. And they're not always going to be quite so 
in, engaged as we'd like them to be because it's like oh yeah 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 we know she does that or we know he does that kind of thing people don't always click the button unfortunately and as a as a professional photographer when you see some of the p- pictures that get shared and likes and everything on there you can say it's not fair <laughs> i know um and and i think it's so important that you do not compare yourself too much yeah, um, yeah. to others because there's always going to be somebody who who does it like we say better or mm. more successful but if mm. you can just look at your own stuff and it's hard it doesn't come naturally because naturally we do compare ourselves but i think if you're conscious about that behavior mm that it's going to make you a little bit happier as a person if you do not uh, engage in, oh my God, she's doing this. And just look at other people's stuff and get inspired. Yeah. Because, yeah. oh, you know, that's a cool way to do it. Maybe I can implement, but not comparing to where as you put yourself down, it is, I think, way too many people do that. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, if you hang your self-esteem on these things and things like social media, it, it can be very bad for your mental health and yeah. You can keep going back thinking, have I had another like yet? And that's no, no, not no. a good place to be. No. No, that that sort of thing doesn't help you to run a business well. You do the the social media because it's part of your marketing. Sure. That you, that's fine. But if you start to get too connected to it with your own feelings of self-worth and you're on a slippery slope, I think, then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's not good for anyone. No, no, absolutely not. So... I mean, when you're when you're doing your training that you've got, sort of um, f- training other photographers, and do you you doing online and in person? Aren't you? I think so. Do mm-hmm. some classes mm-hmm. on online. Yeah. So, what have you got coming up in the next sort of few months that um, you could tell people about, where they might be able to either meet you for a one personal training or see you online? What sort of things have you got coming up? Well, I have, like I mentioned, there is a workshop in Finland. If you're mm-hmm. anywhere close to Finland next month, connect with me on social media. That works great in that mm-hmm. uh, area. And that is a fine art workshop. So it's going to be a full day, models, mm-hmm. shooting and editing, fun, fun day. And then I have in Oslo in Norway, in the middle of May, there is going to be at a big camera store. I've been We've been visiting them before together with Canon, mm-hmm. and we will do a three-hour workshop first, and then we will do an, a lecture like in the evening. So that's that's two mm. live ones. Oh, oh no! I also have with my friend, like I mentioned. Mm-hmm. You know, we have mm-hmm. at the castle at the end of May. Yeah. So we're gonna have like a two-day workshop where we stay and live. It's not the castle this time; it's like a mansion. Nice. <laughs> Only a mansion, not a castle. Yeah, we skipped the castle this year. <laughs> this is a beautiful place, and we're gonna be hanging out. And we have a couple of spots still available for that one, and that's amazing. If we get international people coming, we will do it in English. Mm-hmm. If we're own Swedes, we do it in Swedish. So we are totally flexible that way. We always said that. Mm-hmm. And so those are the two closest ones. I'm also coming to Coventry, right? For the Click Live ah, okay. in June. Yeah. Uh, so those are the the live speaking engagements that are planned. Mm-hmm. I don't think I can squeeze any more in there now. <laughs> uh, there should be plenty to to handle. I'll keep you busy. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> and then online, I do not have anything planned right now as far as group classes. I just finished on Wednesday. I had an editing mm-hmm. class. And other than that, it might pop up something new. I'm not sure. But this, if there's anybody out there who actually wants a one-to-one, yeah. I do that quite often. Mm-hmm. And it's really cool because we do customize that. Ah, great. To yeah. whatever need yeah. people have. And yeah. sometimes I edit my stuff just to get them hooked on the basics and inspired. Mm-hmm. But I also have more evolved photographers that wants me to take their images and I work on them and I tell them, this is what I would do with this image and, mm. and so on. And that's pretty awesome. Yeah. I can do one-on-one workshops in the studio. Mm. I had this Swedish photographer, amazing woman. She lives in Montana, but she has family a couple hours away from me where I live. So last, about a year and a half ago, she was on vacationing in Sweden mm-hmm. and she called me up and we set up her on a one-to-one day workshop. Mm. All about her, bringing in models. She told me what she wanted to learn more about. We had a business part of it, price list part of it. And then we did the shooting and editing. I was just so great. Mm. So 
all of that, I'm always open to listen in mm-hmm. and hear what people need. And then we'll talk what kind of package we can make. Mm, excellent. Yeah. You know, one thing I quite often like to ask my guests is if they could photograph anywhere or any anyone and what would it be? But it sounds like you've already got some dream locations for those castles and mansions, you know. <laughs> sounds like you've done it already. <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes locations can be intimidating too. I have to say that yeah. that – there's one castle we've been a couple of years and it's like the, the, the interior is quite challenging. Mm. It's kind of those dark castles where you'd be like, where am I going <laughs> to get that kind of feeling? So mm. locations, I'm not so sure. More like we sometimes when you see these on Instagram, these abandoned buildings. Oh, yeah. That are covered like with greenery and, <laughs> and those get my juices flowing. You know, it's like, wow. And for as far as people goes, Oh, it's kind of hard. I'm a f- big fan of Dolly Parton. That would be great to do a fine art shoot with Dolly Parton. Dolly Parton, she's in, always so... <laughs> Dolly Parton in an yeah. abandoned warehouse. There you go. Yeah, yeah <laughs> with with a fine art kind of a feel, like a different type of outfit, and and making her like a painting. That would be cool. That would be quite a project, wouldn't it? Yeah, I know. Excellent. <laughs> so when are we? Ha- when's that happening then? <laughs> yeah, I know. Just got to find her people to talk to my people, and then we'll work it out. Excellent. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So where can people keep up with your work and keep an eye out for the Dolly Parton photo? <laughs> there you go. Uh, well, I am. I'm on Instagram, mm-hmm. and it's Martina underline Warmfelt with a W, mm-hmm. and I'm on LinkedIn, Martina Warmfelt. Facebook is mostly Swedish, but it's the same there. Martina Warrenfeldt. I think it's actually my studio name on there, M Studio. But if you go for, since my last name is so mm-hmm. uh, not very common, if you go searching for Martina Warrenfeldt and if you put two dots over the A, mm-hmm. you'll definitely find a lot of places. I kept the yeah. two dots when I rebuilt my logo mm-hmm. because I figure if Hagen does can, yeah. so can I. Absolutely. <laughs> Lovely comparison there, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Hagen does keep their two dots over the A, so is Martina Ware. <laughs> Brilliant. Love it. Thank you very much for being a guest on the uh, podcast today, Martina. We've really appreci- appreciated having you on. It's been so much fun, Joe. I really, I'm so happy you asked, and I'm just glad to be here. Thank you very much. And thank you all for listening to the Focused Professional Podcast.